morning friends it gives me immense pleasure to be here again for my course flight mechanics this course belongs to the fourth semester of aeronautical engineering from institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad india uh, today i am going to take topic landing performance as you know that we have different phases of the flight and if you see here first it has to take off on the runway it will go like this then it has to climb then it has it has to cruise then it has to descend and after descending it has to land so landing is also one of the very important phase of the flight without this aircraft cannot be safe on the ground so i am going to discuss today about the landing performance before going to this i have already completed the first module which is introduction to flight mechanics which covers the atmosphere then instrumentation lift drag drag polar thrust required power required thrust available power available stall velocity and all parameters in module 1 module 2 is a climb performance cruise performance in that we have seen that equation of motion that l is equal to w and the thrust is equal to drag and in that we have seen that range endurance for the jet aircraft for the propeller aircraft and also with different configuration of the aircraft then we have in module 3 we have seen the climb performance in that the climb angle gamma is important and how these things are happening now i am in the module in module 4 we have seen the maneuvering performance that is accelerated flight the turning and the pull up and the pull down maneuvers and all so today i am going to discuss about landing performance and as you know i am dr vaidhu devedi professor from institute of aeronautical engineering department of aeronautical engineering hyderabad india in today's topic i am going to take the landing performance phases of the landing performance minimization of ground roll forces during landing performance discontinued landing procedure of discontinued landing these are the topics which i am going to cover in my today's lecture so if we i will discuss about the landing performance and landing is another very demanding phase of the flight so just if i make it here this is the your take off i will write take off from here it is a climb climb from climb it is very long it is a cruise here this you can do maneuver also from the cruise it is the descent and from here it is a landing so landing is the final phase or final mission profile of any aircraft and the take off and the landing both has to be performed with a very safe way because most of the accidents are happening during the take off and the landing due to the different weather condition due to the different uh, uh, other conditions it is very much important that we should understand that how the aircraft is performing during the landing so <clears throat> as with the take off the aircraft is operating at air speed near the stall means near the minimum flight condition of the or the minimum speed of the aircraft it is landing so during the stall there may be stall during the landing so precise control of the flight path is important to assure touchdown at the desired point on the runway and with a minimum sink rate another challenging involved is landing is dissipating the energy of the aircraft once on the ground to bring the stop so we we have to put the brake it may be the air brake during high speed and after the landing when the speed is reduced we have to use the uh, wheel brake 
So it is very important that how much energy is dissipated and this energy is properly transmitted so that the system is cooled. Now landing performance is very dependent on the pilot technique. So in this pilot experience is very important. Pilot experience is very much required. So now minimization of the ground roll. So what is the ground roll and how much we can minimize? To minimize the ground roll distance, the to total retarding force acting on the aircraft must be examined. So what is the ground roll? If you see here during descent, if aircraft is landing like this, so from here touch down to this at coming to zero, this is called the ground roll distance rg so how to minimize this runway distance runway distance that we have to understand so to minimize the ground roll distance it is called sg the total retarding force acting on the aircraft must be maximized so the braking forces to be maximized and also we have to make sure that aircraft should not get damaged. The retarding force may consist of brake application, drag from the drag chute. You might have seen for the fighter aircraft, we are using the, the uh, parachute or some other techniques to increase the drag and the speed brakes and reverse thrust in addition to the normal brake of the aircraft. So, during the landing, we, we are intended to make more drag and this can happen due to the drag chute, the speed breakers, reverse thrust, which are used to make the additional drag of the aircraft. Pilot techniques are very important during the ground roll. For example, one on some aircraft holding full aft stick during the ground roll provides a favorable takeoff between increased aircraft drag and the reduced download on the main gear. So this is one technique in which the pilot will hold the stick and do the backward. So if it is putting the backward, the it is very good technique to increase the aircraft drag and reduce the download on the main gear. It is reduced. Forces during landing are same as the takeoff as we have discussed earlier. So we will discuss the forces during landing of what type of forces are acting. The rolling friction coefficient mu r becomes much larger that is 0.5 for the dry concrete runway. This you can see here the, the forces in this diagram. So this is the your. So in this this is in fact for the takeoff, but if you see here, you make it opposite. So this is the one force R is equal to mu n. There is a thrust, there is a lift, there is a weight and there is a drag. So the drag becomes significant much larger because of the speed brake and the drag chute. Thrust is small value or negative. So this force here, this is called the drag force. This drag force is much larger for the landing. So becomes significant much larger because of speed brake because we are using the speed brakes and the drag chute during the landing. Thrust should be very small and sometimes you can make it negative that is called the reverse thrusting. Assuming level runway when this phi is equal to zero it is we have the acceleration and we can see this this acceleration a is equal to g by w in break if you see here t minus t minus d minus mu r w minus l so here this ax we can make it minus g by w minus t plus d plus mu r minus l w minus l. So this is the acceleration 
due to the landing of the aircraft because we have decelerated so above equations become negative so this is for the takeoff as shown in this diagram but this is the landing which we make as a negative in this direction so by the changing this sign we have made this thing as the aircraft is landing but it is shown here the takeoff so takeoff we are observing as a positive and if we make the negative forces then it is a deacceleration and this has become the landing performance so here sg landing this is the ground roll of the landing is equal to vtd to zero means from here and it is here is the zero it is a zero and here v touchdown td is a touchdown and here v by ax into dv so the ground roll distance we know that the drag is d and the lift l is given by this drag is equal to cd q bar s where q bar is a dynamic pressure half rho v square cd is a total drag so this cd we can write as cd naught plus kcl square q bar s where s is a area q bar is a dynamic pressure so this total drag d is equal to cd q bar and to s where s is the area of the wing now this lift is equal to cl q bar s here cl is a lift coefficient q bar is a dynamic pressure s is the area of the wing so here we can write that q bar is equal to half rho v square so we can combining this we can get that ground roll distance for the landing is vtd to zero we can put this value here v by minus g by w minus t plus d plus mu r w minus l into dv further we can uh, simplify v by g by w minus t plus cd half rho v square for this d we can write cd half rho v square s plus mu r w minus l we can write cl half rho v square into s i think just now we have made that what is the d and what is the l half rho v square s c d and l is equal to half rho v square s c l same thing we have put here and we got this equation now by integrating we uh, get this equation and of the landing distance so here s g landing is equal to w by g rho s c d minus mu r c l log 1 plus c d minus mu r c l in bracket rho s v square t d divided by 2 minus t plus mu r w so this is the distance which is directly proportional to the weight weight is very important and also it is inversely proportional to the density and the area so this equation we used to estimate the landing of the ground run during the period of braking remember that cd must include the effect of speed brake and or a drag tube so here whatever we are putting the cd here all the cd it is not only the aircraft wing and all but also speed brake speed brakes parachute air brakes all these things we have to include in the cd so that we have to take care of now we will discuss about the another topic is discontinued landing and this is also known as a go around missed approach or the wave off discontinued landing is a also called the go around missed approach sometimes it is you are not able to land properly so you will come like this and our wave off so just you can see aircraft is flying like this and here is the runway it is trying to land but 
pilot sees that there is some obstruction on the runway or ATC also feel that there is some problem on the runway and you are not able to land properly. That time what you have to do? Pilot will be go around. It will go like this, may touch or may not touch and it will again fly. And it will make the circuit like this and after permission from the ATC, it will again try to land. So this type of phenomena is called the discontinued landing. The name of this thing may be go around, may be missed approach or may be the wave of the flight. So these are the few terms which are used for the discontinued landing. So what is the go around? A go around is an aborted landing of an aircraft that is on final approach. A go around can either be initiated by the pilot flying or requested by the ATC for various reasons such as unstabilized approach or and some aviation problems are there. Go around can either be initiated by the pilot flying or requested by ATC for the various, various reasons and it is or some obstruction on the runway. So uh, sometimes ATC will observe that there is some vehicle or some animal or some foreign object that is lying on the runway. ATC will instruct the pilot to go around or sometimes pilot will see all of a sudden that some animal, rabbit, dog or anything, some birds are also sometimes on the runway. So pilot will inform to the ATC and it will again take off. So that is called the go around. If a pilot determines by the time the aircraft is at the decision height for a precision approach that the runway or its uh, environment is not sight or that a safe landing cannot be accomplished by any reason, the landing approach must be discontinued, a go around. So it is approaching like this. But pilot sees that there is some problem, there is some damage in the runway, there is some vehicle on the runway, there is some maintenance work in the runway and ATC is not observing, then pilot will take the decision if it is beyond the decision point. If it is cross the decision point, it is very difficult to take the decision. So if it is within the limit, pilot will try to re-climb, re-fly the aircraft and this is called the missed approach procedure. So I will discuss about procedure of discontinued landing. So one by one I will go. So first one is initiate of a go around procedure may be either ordered by the air traffic controller. Normally the local or tower controller in a control field or initiated by the pilot in command of the aircraft. So it can be by the ATC, the controller who, which is controlling the aircraft at that particular time. He or she may give the order to the pilot that there is some problem and you have to discontinue the landing. Means you again you go around and take the or it may be initiated by the pilot itself in the command if the pilot sees some abnormality on the runway. Applying go around power adopted an appropriate climb attitude and air speed. So for go around you need to give the throttle because for the landing you need less throttle but engine is running but as and when you feel that we have to go around throttle has to be increased for the takeoff position and attitude of the aircraft may be changed from dive to climb. Retracting one stage of the flap if necessary. So the flaps which was put down for higher for the landing, it may be retracted again for the takeoff position. Checking of a positive rate of climb and raising the landing gears if equipped with retractable landing gear. So you have to start the rate of climb and retract your wheels which are undercarriage here, the wheels and other things has to go down again inside the aircraft. This has to be performed. Retracting the flaps fully when the aircraft achieves a certain safe air speed. So now the flap has to be again put to the neutral and if aircraft has reached to the certain altitude. Climbing 
to clear altitude or pattern altitude if an uncontrolled airfield. So it has to go to the clear altitude, some height which is prescribed by the air traffic controller for that particular zone. Advise ATC if go around was pilot initiated or acknowledge ATC instruction if an controlled airfield. So if pilot is doing by its observation immediately, he or she has to inform the ATC and if ATC has done, then ATC has to maintain and he has or she has to observe the status of the runway and they have to give the permission to re-land on the runway. Another very important topic is bog landing. Bog landing is also very necessary. The way the bog landing term is generally used is that the actual landing procedure has begun and must be aborted. So bog landing means as you have started to land, you have started the procedure for landing and then you have to abort the landing. You have to re retake off. That is called the bog landing. A go around generally begins at a higher altitude and lacks the urgency of bike landing. So go around is much higher height, but bark landing is very near to the landing. So go around is generally begins at a higher altitude and lacks the urgency of the bark landing. So if you see here, if you are landing from here, if you have taken decision here, it is a go around. And if you have re your aircraft reached here, then it is called the bark landing. Okay. So it is less distance, less height. Bark landing has the less height than the go around. Bark landing climb is a go around from a below decision height. So this is the DH. So this is your back landing, back landing height. Possibly the flare, note that all engines are assumed available, assume require gradient on. So back landing is very, very near below the decision height and during the flare. And what is the flare? Just I will draw here. If aircraft is coming from here and your nose wheel, tail wheel is touching but no wheel is not touching. This is called the flare. Few seconds, two, three seconds, aircraft will, just I will show here. So it is coming here and as touching this nose wheel, nose will be up, and a tail wheel will be touching and aircraft will be mo moving with only one set of wheel. Nose wheel is not touching. That is called the flare of the aircraft. So that has to be performed in that way. So now go around throw all, uh, go around with the all thrust of all engine. Landing gear should be down. Landing gear flaps to be set. These are the few points which we have to assume during the bulk landing. Bark landing procedure, I am going to discuss how the pilot is following the procedure for the bark landing and you, you know that the bark landing means it is just about to touch the ground and then you are taking the decision to again take off. That is called the bark landing. So what is the procedure for the bark landing? Power full throttle. So you have to give full throttle, 100% full throttle you have to apply. Air speed 76 knots until clear of obstacles, then trim to normal climb speed. It is for a particular aircraft when it is not for all a general aviation piston engine aircraft. So you have to give the full throttle, pilot has to lift this throttle up to 100%. You increase the air speed up to 76 knots until the clear of all obstacles, then trim to the normal climb speed. Then you try to clean the air. Uh, Trim the aircraft to the normal climb speed. Flaps should be up. So flaps initially it was down. So now you, during the landing it should be more down. Now you have climbing. So flaps you have to make up. Landing gear also you make it up if it is retractable. This you can see here. What is the meaning here? It is the one Cessna aircraft here. 
So this is not touching. This is the nose wheel. Nose wheel not touching the ground. Okay. So from here you have to take the decision. This is you have to make in flap. It should be again make in, into the original position. So like this you have to take it. Another diagram is shown here for the bark landing here. This is your nose wheel here and the other tail wheel. So first it has to go with the tail wheel like this and then it has to take off. Missed approach and bark landing. So another term is coming the missed approach. So this you can see here that what is the meaning of the, it is the runway here. This runway, if you see here, this is the desired path. Your actual aircraft should come in this green line. But if you see here, it is below that. So if it is coming like this, it will not touch the runway. Before that, it will touch somewhere here. It is not a good. This much length, you are going early. So this type of, it is called the mist. Mist approach. You are not in the correct path. And this may happen due to the wind condition, due to the climate con condition and all. So this type of landing is called the mist landing. And this you can see here, if it is like this, pilot decides to go around. So if it is like this, then pilot has to take decision over here. Because runway is here. And if you are not reaching to the runway, pilot has to go like this. So it is called the bark landing. And this has to clear this obstacle. That much height your aircraft should be able to perform so that aircraft can take off very easily. In the next lecture, I will be discussing the takeoff and the landing performance, common characteristics, takeoff principles, Lockheed Martin C-130, Hercules takeoff and the landing, takeoff phases and the ground roll distances, derivation of the ground roll distances, forces during takeoff, average acceleration methods. These are the references which I have taken from Anderson JD. Junior Aircraft Performance and Design, International Edition, Migra Hills, first edition, 1999. SL by ME, Aircraft Performance, Theory and Practice, AIA Education Series, AIA 2. Any questions, you are welcome to ask. Please do like and subscribe my channel. My email ID is ydduvedi at the rate gmail.com. Please go through and make the comments in the comment box. Thank you very much for the joining. Be tuned for my next lecture. Till then, goodbye. Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.